So what approaches do you take uh, educating cancer patients concerning blood clots, considering it can be a daunting experience? Every patient's different, and a one-size-all approach to education may not always work. There are some who will find reading materials very helpful. There are others who do not get on with reading materials. Just giving someone a DVD and telling them to go watch that is fine if they do, but when you go away with a stack of information... They're not going to go through it. You're not going to go through yeah. it. Now, I think the resources that you have on the Thrombosis Canada website are very useful. And I think the fact that patient involvement has been so evident, you're actually directing what is necessary because you know what you as a patient would need. I think we need a mixture of resources. I think videos, video cards, information leaflets, all of those things work. Absolutely. But I think also a way of educating is to ask, what do you know? what don't you know. And that comes it, with the community. It comes well, with right? the community. I think the family physician has a role here. The hospital has a role. The pharmacist has a role. We are not just there to treat illness, we are there for health promotion. Mm -hmm. So one person will benefit from a conversation, another will need time to go off and take that information and read up on it. So we need to be flexible. Great, thank you. So Sam, as a patient myself suffering from rare, uh, multiple rare conditions, I find um, within my circle of care of, of healthcare providers, there's always this hierarchy of information. Um, how do you help cancer associated thrombosis patients to, you know, decipher, you know, the difference between cancer information and thrombosis information and how to prioritize that? I think some of those priorities are apparent as they happen. Of course, yes. So a patient who doesn't have a blood clot, talking about blood clots is going to be less of a priority when they're starting their chemotherapy as such. And they will need a lot of information about the chemotherapy and about the cancer mm -hmm. for their first cycle. We do need to be able to give them information about the signs and symptoms of blood clots, but in a way that we don't overwhelm them. Absolutely. And the worst thing out is to give a patient a stack of information like that, tick on our notes there, they've had the information, because we've got no idea whether they've read it, they've taken it on board. Mm -hmm. Are there any organizations you would like to tell patients that could help them to basically build their knowledge and advocate for thrombosis care and cancer together? Yeah, I think that's a brilliant question because if we don't give patients guidance where to look, they'll go on this anarchic library, which is called the internet. Yeah. And you can find a load of information there, but some of it can be terrifying. Absolutely. And some of it can be unregulated. So the fact that Thrombosis Canada is doing this and putting out all these resources actually gives patients a very clear point of reference to learn from. And I think many, many countries offer that sort of resource. Yeah, yeah. So I think you've got to find one which suits you. And often I work with Thrombosis UK, formerly yep. Lifeblood, and we will also have links on our websites to other websites that we would vouch for. I think also patients and families need to be talking to their local doctors and healthcare professionals. Absolutely. Because they may have their own in-house information. I think the most important thing is that as a patient, we need to be able to take a degree of responsibility for our own health. Of course, yes. By trying to understand and trying to know what we can do to improve our own care. Doctors and nurses, pharmacists, health professionals will be there to offer help, but actually we're the ones at the end of this. We're the ones living with it 24-7. So we're the ones who've got the most opportunity to actually get in there and do something positive for ourselves. I mean, uh, the more we learn about our, our illnesses and conditions, we can help to bring some you know, solutions to the doctors as well and help that process to really come along. Patients are often the experts in their condition. Absolutely. I, as a clinician, learn so much off my patients because if I only see them for 20 minutes every month, yeah. how much do I get to see of them? How much do I understand how their thrombus affects their social life, their ability to take holidays? 
their, their hopes, their fears. Yeah, and yeah. so patients can educate us. But not only that, you know, someone may come and see me, a supposed expert in the field, and there'll be a lot for them to learn, but not everyone is an expert. Yeah. And I know many junior doctors who will benefit from the patient as the expert, who will be able to point them in the right direction of, you really need to be considering this when you look after me. Of course, of course.